Okay, hello ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome to my first YouTube video. Um, I'm calling it The Light and How to Swing It. It's an introduction to Consecrated Strikes. Uh, you know, there is so much misinformation about the build, and I can tell you from my own personal experience, I've lost thousands of gold in enchantments. I've spent my Raider accommodation points on the wrong pieces of gear. Um, I've had loot not looted to me in, in like just this week in AQ40. I won the roll on a spell power sword and was not, it was not looted to me. The raid leader uh, said that it was no good for me. It didn't have high enough flat damage on the weapon. And so this hundred plus spell power sword, uh, it's the one off of Sidious, I think, uh, and with, with like 17 crit, I think is what it had in heroic, it was 15 to 17, somewhere in there. So this crit, really high spell power weapon that would have been insane for my character. Well, it couldn't even loot it. And the, the raid leader that was running the raid, he actually plays Constrikes as well. But there's so much misinformation out there that he couldn't realize uh, that how good it was. And as a matter of fact, there were other people playing Constrike in the raid that did not roll for it. And so that tells me right there that there's a lot of misinformation. People are having a hard time gearing. I see some mistakes at uh, at the top level, like uh, like if I do an Ascended Blackwing Layer, for example, and we'll usually have several Consecrated Strike players in there, and um, you know, I can I can just there's little things I see. So, for example, people use Heroic Strike or Cleave, and they macro it into their abilities, and they feel like they're getting extra damage off this uh, Rage resource that they're not using otherwise. But the truth is, and I was playing that way, and because there's a lot of guides that'll tell you to do things like that. The only time that was ever good is whenever there was the RE called Faithful Flex. It's still in the game. It used to proc up for a strike, and that would have been a damage increase if you could if you could do that. But it's been hot fixed and it doesn't work. And so you're actually nerfing your damage if you're using heroic strike. So like I say, I, I've blown thousands of gold. I've wasted lots of raider commendations, and even more so, I've brick builds. I mean, during the holiday event, I was running in prestige, which is something I don't really enjoy. And uh, you know, if you do enjoy it, that's awesome. But for me, it's a chore, and it's a chore that I would do uh, instead of running dungeons or raids. I would go in prestige, so I wanted the points to to improve this character, and it wound up being about ninety five percent right. I mean, initially I prestige just so I got boom conform um, and in pretty decent rolls. And then I invested in all those prestiges to get the points. Uh, I wound up maxing out my hands of fate. I can't do any more. And so the problem was like, Sil we'll get into it. You know, Scylla Command versus Scylla Righteousness, which is better. And I'm going to tell you right now, it's Scylla Righteousness. You don't want Scylla Command. You got to wait till level 20 to get Scylla Command, or you got to card it if you really want it, right? It's like Mr. Bossy Pants trying to tell people what to do. But, you know, it's like that mid level manager you got to report to at work, you know? want to boss everybody around, can't be found, and not really good at what they do anyways. So unlike Scylla Righteous, you know, it's right there at level one in your starting zone. Scylla Righteous wants to help you kill the very first boar, you know, complete your very first quest in the starting zone, and it wants to take you all the way through that portal behind me, right? So that's Scylla of Righteous. It does fantastic, like it does so much more damage, and the reason is because of scaling. So Scylla Righteous and Scylla Command both scale off attack power, and spell power, so they can double dip. And later on, we'll talk about mental quickness. Like, we get a lot of value <laughs> out of attack power because we're taking mental quickness, and some of our attack power is going to become spell power. So, our abilities that double dip, like Seal of Righteous or Seal Command 2, um, are very, very strong. But Seal of, Seal of Command, it pays a tax. So, in a game, when they balance it, let's take two priest abilities, let's say Smite. Okay, and we'll take Holy Nova. If you were a game designer, you would start out and you would say, okay, well, I've got one ability that's going to hit one target. I'm going to let it hit for 100. I've got this other ability, Holy Nova. It's going to hit everything around it. We'll let it hit for, okay, uh, 30. All right, that seems, that seems more fair. But it would break down and it wouldn't work if every time you got 100 spell power, you added 100 damage, right? Because once you got, say, 1,000 spell power, you would have a smite that hit for 1,100 damage to one target. And you'd have Holy Nova over here hitting for 1,030, everything around it with one cast. And so what they do is they, they make attacks or they make the ability scale differently, depending if it's and it, every, every ability in the game has got a different way that it scales off your spell power or your attack power. 
Yeah, it's not a one to one. I got a hundred. Uh, I should have been jumping. So uh, you know, it's not a hundred. Um, it's not a hundred uh, spell power. It gives you a hundred flat damage. Every single ability in the game is going to get different value. Seal of Righteous for our build with mental quickness that we're going to take. And I'll, I guess I can go ahead and show you that. But mental quickness is going to be in the Shaman Tree. It's going to be, it's going to make this build work. You're going to really want mental quickness, okay? And what that's going to do is, you see that it's 20% if with all five passives. And this is doubled if your primary stat is streamer. So it's going to be 40% of our attack power is turned into spell power. And so what's, what makes this build, and where, where we're going to focus, the things we're going to look at, is we like abilities that double dip or scale off of both. And so that's Seal of Righteous. And so Seal of Righteous, like I said, it doesn't pay the tax. It scales harder with spell power and with attack power than Seal of Command does. Like, you know Seal of Command is really bad whenever they had to introduce an RE to let an RP uh, role play as... Uh, seal of righteousness. Okay, direct command. It allows your seal of command to, to deal 30% more damage, but only hits one target. And that's the difference really between command and, and righteous is that command hits multiple targets. So with this RE, you know, you'll basically have a a really weak version of seal of righteousness because even with 30% increased damage, it does not fix the fact that Seal of Righteous is scaling so much better. And what you're gonna find is, every time you get a piece of gear improvement, every time you do a new a new uh, instance, or let's say like you get into Nax and you start getting even higher attack power, higher spell power, higher strength, uh, Seal of Righteous is just going to continue to moving, uh, continue to keep moving ahead of Seal of Command. So that seals out of the way. That's what we'll want when you start. Uh, what I choose to start with is I don't leave the starting zone without charge and fade. I, I take seal of righteous and I take seal uh, judgment of, of wisdom. So you want the mana regen. And so, you know, if, if, if you know the game well enough and, and you know exactly what you want to do, or you're willing to experiment and you want to do like seal of light or uh, judgment of light, Hey, you know, this video is probably not for you, but um, if you can get anything out of it, that's cool. But really, this is not for like, if you know the game that well, then you're free to experiment and try anything you want. But, you know, this is how I would play it. I wouldn't leave the starting zone without those four abilities. That's going to be my first four cards. Then I'm going to want to get, if, let's say I didn't want charge and I just hated it for some reason. I don't know. I don't want to be hipster. Then the next thing I would get, I would get a buff, like maybe uh, Battle Shout. Mark of the Wild. We'll get into it more in a little bit. Mark of the Wild is my favorite buff. Uh, maybe just behind Kings with uh, with the investment that I give to Mark of the Wild. I think it's really, really good. But those are the abilities I'd want while I'm leveling up. Or uh, like maybe what I would card is there's two ways to card, and you can card safe or you can card you know risky. I normally go risky, and I take something like a flame tongue weapon, and I take. Uh, I guess, yeah, we'll talk about it in just a minute, but uh, I'll take Flame Tongue Weapon, Shamanistic Rage, I'll take uh, Hammer of the Righteous, because my build doesn't work without Hammer of the Righteous, and then Aspect of the Beast. And that's somewhat based on what golden cards and regular cards I have laying around. I feel like the other, like Hammer of, the, of, of Righteous is rare, and it does, you won't see it till 60. And so you could easily wind up, if you don't card it, you could easily wind up not having it and your build not working. There's two other abilities you're going to need or that your build won't work. And that's going to be Exorcism and it's going to be uh, Hammer of Wrath. And so if you don't have those two, really the safe bet is going to be to card those. Uh, all three of those. You know, Aspect of the Beast, like I card Aspect of the Beast and, and Shaman Mystic Rage and Flame Tongue. But those could be considered like quality of life. Really, I like on my alt, I rolled uh, and got Rockbiter Weapon. It's not a huge difference. I did, well, didn't have the Flame Tongue card on that character. So, um, Rockbiter is not it's not that massive, but I'm going to tell you that like, hands down of the two, you want Flame Tongue Weapon. And the reason is, going back to that scaling of getting 100 uh, attack power on your weapon, that once it's converted over 
it winds up being pretty close. Like for using the example of our uh, our largest uh, hitting ability, which is going to be Hammer Wrath, it's going to carry most of our damage. It winds up if you compare it, Rockbiter versus this flat twenty five damage, it's pretty close. And then the and so it's pretty close. And then the proc here, which is scaled off a of, uh, spell power, like. For me right now, it's somewhere around 7% of my damage overall. So if the flat spell power is close to the 100 attack power, um, and then on top of that, I've got 7% of my damage coming from the proc, then to me, this is a no-brainer. I haven't tested Frostbrand weapon, um, so I'd be, I be—I don't know what the proc chance is, and I just haven't rolled it. I'm not, I'm not ruling it out. But I can tell you definitively that rock or flame tongue is better than uh, rock batter, so we can put that to rest. Um, so our rotation is going to be now that we have those starting abilities and we know uh, we'll go to macro real quick. And I'm, I'm gonna have to be fast. Uh, the last video I did was over an hour and I didn't get everything in. Okay, so what I do is a cast sequence, and I reset it at five point five seconds, but it's Par for the course to do six. I do 5.5 because I'm a hipster. So it's just as easy to make that six, but like I do 5.5. So then I do Judgment of Wisdom. Then I cast Hammer of the Righteous, Exorcism, and Hammer of Wrath. This is my racial, but you don't have to cast it. I cast it on cooldown for max uh, throughput, but if I was really pro gamer, I would micromanage that and I would know how, how long my fights were going to be in advance and I'll know exactly when I wanted to use it. But I, as it is, I just use it for, you know, on cooldown. It's off the GCD. Uh, hand directing, we'll talk about briefly. Shamanistic Rage is, how, is one of the, my big secrets to getting in on this build. And I prefer it over most other, like, I prefer this over Life Tap a million times over. Um, I don't like a location compared to Shamanistic Rage. And what really makes Shamanistic Rage for me, like, regen mana well is that it scales off my attack power. It's 15% of your attack power returned as mana on your melee swings. It's got a very short cooldown. It's a one minute cooldown and it's up for 15 seconds. So, uh, you know, my, my mana pool can be going down, 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 and then I'll proc Shamanistic Rage and I'll get, I'll get carried back up. It winds up being like a battery that I recharge. And that's the, one of the reasons we'll talk about later that I like the Judgment set over the Wrath set is that I get a lot more intellect. And, you know, the only thing is you have to build for it. But building for it is taking three talents of mental dexterity in the shaman tree. That's it. Um, that that winds up making, to me, making the judgment set better than the wrath set. <clears throat> I have on use trinket. This is for scroll applying lights. And then I just start attack to begin my melee attacks. So that's the rotation here, though. And this is how you're going to play. In order to do this and make the rotation work, there's going to be some mandatory talents. And so let's get into them here. This is mental dexterity, just so you know. So it's letting 60% of my intellect become attack power. This is, like I said, this is what makes my, um, this is what makes me give the edge to judgment set. Plus, plus the MP5 in, in the larger mana pool. Um, but as far as damage wise, it allows it to be competitive. And I can pretty much guarantee you if you're rocking the wrath set, you would already know you're doing some wonky stuff to, to keep your man up. You're burning points. Uh, I've seen people swap into seal of wisdom so that they, you know, so nerfing their damage temporarily. I've seen people do an evocation in the little fights on a longer fight. I feel like I, I perform better. My damage over time, like on a long fight, say Nefarian, it'll, I'll climb. I may be getting beat initially, but without having to stop in life tap or cast an evocation in the middle of the fight or swip, you know swap to seals of wisdom, um, I, I you know I'm like the little engine that could. I'll slowly creep up there, you know, on a longer fight. And so I like that about this build. So let's talk about mandatory talents. All right, we want that cast sequence that I showed you. So our our judgment of wisdom. And then uh, Hammer the Righteous, and then we're going to have Exorcism. We're wanting Exorcism to be instant cast, and we're wanting it to be six seconds long. And then we're going to follow it up with a Hammer of Wrath. And we want to be able to cast Hammer of Wrath at any life pool. So here's how we do it. We take Improved Judgments, three of three, mandatory. It's going to drop your uh, cast time 
down or your, your cooldown down to seven seconds on your judgment. And then we'll use two of the uh, we'll use two hasty judgments of wisdom. And that'll get us one additional second off. Um, that will bring us to a six second cooldown on our judgment of wisdom. And so now we have six seconds here uh, on our judgment. Hammer of the Righteous, which will be our next cast, will automatically be six seconds. So we're going to take um, Vindication. I like it. It's strong. There may be other places. This is not mandatory. These are mandatory. Uh, Heart of the Crusade, I'll just say, is mandatory. It's not actually, but especially with Seals of Righteous, you're going to, this will be our only, this will be our primary form of AoE. And it's strong AoE. Okay. This is, I'm going to say mandatory. The Five points for five crits, not that great. However, it's the capstone that we're after. 30% of our strength will become uh, critical strike rating. Now, when I have all my procs, I have Crusader 1 and Crusader 2, and they can both independently proc if you have different different versions of Crusader. Um, when they proc and I have my uh, RE, the Consecrated Strength, uh, when they all three proc together, you know, this is the jackpot. Or the uh, this is like the casino of builds, right? So when they all three proc together, like I'll have over a thousand strength, and so that's thirty percent crit. I, I would say mandatory. It's technically not, but uh, I would highly recommend it. Uh, so sanctity of battle, it's mandatory, and the reason it is mandatory is it's going to allow your hammer of wrath once you cast an exorcism. It's going to allow your hammer of wrath to go off instantly, or it's going to allow your hammer of wrath to be used on target regard irregardless of its health pool of where it's at. And so when you start a boss fight and it's not in execute range, normally you couldn't use Hammer Wrath. With this ability, you can, so long as you've used Exorcism prior. <clears throat> I have in the build Crusade, and what I do, when I have nowhere, like, Crusade's strong. And so when I have free points, like, let's say some magically I got more mana and I didn't want the one point in Judgment of Lies. At that point, we'll go here. It's very strong. It's like in waiting, ready to be filled up. The two points that were here, I had it at three. They went into improved Mark of the Wild. Then we'll cover that in a little bit. But you know, that's the way I used it. It filled. It it, it was being put here as the highest throughput talent point that I had. Then I chose to take them out. And now, if I free up more points, they're coming here. Um, that's just how I would use it. You can also, if you wind up choosing to play a little different, you can go in the priest tree, and you have almost identical passive here with twin disciplines. And a, and a real quick, I'll, I got to get into it real quick, but I got to try to keep this video short. I, I've been going so far over. I get excited about this build. There's so much to it. Um, so these work for your powers and abilities. When you read in here that it says critical effect chance with holy spells and abilities, okay, or damage and healing done by your holy spells. When they say holy here, they're talking about global holy abilities. And that's one thing that, that paladins use that. However, you're going to be tempted to take this this passive, okay, which is Holy Specialization, which reads that it increases critical strike damage bonus of your Holy Spells by 20%. Assume this would be nuts if it worked. But in this case, when they say Holy Spells here in the Holy Tree, they're talking about this specialization, this this passive tree, these Holy uh, holy Priest abilities, basically. Otherwise, and obviously, uh, this would be busted. This would, you know, it wouldn't double our damage, but it would close to double. It would be so strong. It doesn't work. Just that's a heads up for you guys. Uh, but though, yeah, those those twin discipline and this are almost identical. And like that would be my overflow. If I had points to put nowhere, I didn't have anywhere else to put my points. That's probably where I would put them. Okay, so vengeance, not mandatory, but very, very strong. 15% increased um, holy damage. It's, that's going to carry. That, that's good. But not mandatory technically. If maybe you find somewhere that you can get more res uh, more value, or you're doing some like crazy cool, like really clever uh, build, you can do that. Uh, it won't break this rotation, right? But Art of War is mandatory, and you want or Art of War because you want your judgment and your melee swings to be giving you Art of War proc, which is going to make your exorcism instant cast, and so. If, if you don't have this, you're going to have to do full cast duration 
on exorcism, it won't be instant cast. And then there's no point in reducing the cooldown of your judgment because everything's getting pushed out. So this is mandatory. Um, judgment wise, an insanely good way to get mana back. Um, you can go all the way up to three right now. I'm in a good enough spot to only take one. Um, Sanctified Wrath is required, and it's required because it reduces the cooldown of exorcism to six seconds. And there again, if, if you're not getting your exorcism off instantly and every six seconds, then there's no point in reducing the cooldown on judgment. Um, so yeah, this is mandatory. I'm going to say Righteous Vengeance is mandatory because if you don't take it, you're neutering your bill. This is an insane, like the better your crit rates get, the higher your strength goes and pushes your your crit up as well with it. Like this is a 45% increase or uh, 45% increase uh damage, right? Off your off your base hit. So instead of you getting double damage, you're getting 145% damage. It does it may become the dot. It takes over time. Like uh but it's very, very strong. And and it, your build will never compete. Like if you want you and your buddy both roll comp strikes and you don't take this and he does, he's gonna blow you out of the water. All right, so in protection, we've got three out of three divine strength. That's what you want. Like, if you don't take this, you can get hit in other places, right? But first off, three points for 6% strength isn't bad. It's not great, but it's it's not bad. But then, like I said, it's going to give you so much hit rating. It's going to give you so much flexibility with it when it comes to enchant, the foods that you take, the gear that you select, that, uh, you know, it might as well be mandatory. It's not technically, though. If you can cover your hit, and, and you have some other, um, you know, clever, interesting idea or some way to build, then by all means, you, you don't have to have it. In Holy, I take three out of three judgments of pure. And this is because I'll go ahead and cover briefly. So it's, this goes to the Prado distribution. When, when you see the selections I've taken, uh, Prado, so the Prado distribution was, was discovered. It was basically initially they realized that. 80% of all peas were coming from 20% of the pods, right? And business people call it the 20-80 rule, and they'll say, hey, I get 80% of my commissions and sales from 20% of my clientele, right? And then they'll want to try to figure out, how do I maximize my engagement with that 20%, right? I want to get the maximum return. So I would do the same thing when I look at my damage profile. Um, I'm doing the same thing with this build. And so I'm investing into the stuff that's giving me really good returns. And so um, my judgment hits really, really hard. Judgment of the Righteous with Seal of Righteous, it hits really hard. It's scaling already really well. And so when I come here and I take these points, it's not for the haste. It's to get the 15% increased damage. And you got to remember, and this is, and part of it is because that's my only real AoE. So if, let's say I'm doing the first boss in AQ40 and I take Heart of the Crusader out, which is going to propagate my hit from uh, Judgment of the Righteous. Okay, that's going to give it uh, like a, make it splash to adjacent enemies. If I just unspec that, I'm good. I can go and I won't kill my buddies. If I don't, I'm going to kill my buddies, right? If, if I try to keep Heart of the Crusader on and people are mind controlled around me and I'm just going ham, then Judgment of the Righteous is going to splash damage to the adjacent enemy or my adjacent allies that are mind controlled and kill them. So I can just spec out of these three points and then I'd put them right here, right? I just I just push them here or into the priest, uh, into the priest tree. And that's what I would do. Uh, for the shaman, like I said, this is mandatory for the build, mental quickness. I I I couldn't play without mental dexterity, but I'm sure people could. It's not required. Let's say you had a full wrath set, you you don't have much intellect, you would be building it different than I am here. I'll put that out there. And there 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 are like that could be totally viable. You're going to have to figure out how to handle mana. Um, and you'll probably, your stat priorities might be a little different than mine. Like you may not wait intellect as strongly as I do. I like intellect. 25 intellect is, you got to remember 25 intellect is one crit, 1% 1 crit, right? And so that's, that's a lot. You get a lot of pieces that have a lot of crit on them or a, uh, um, a lot of intellect on them, right? And so, uh, so I'm taking mental dexterity, but not not completely required but for for the way i build and the way i gear it is required for me uh middle quickness same thing it's going to be required for everybody if you're not doing it this way then you're not going to be double dipping 
our largest uh, damage abilities um, all scale off attack power and spell power. And so allowing your attack power to become uh, spell power is basically like double dipping. And of course, a card. We can go through here. We'll, we'll go through everything I have, and maybe I'll cover some of the stuff that I that I don't have that I would like. So our arcane intellect, I, I value because, of course, no dexterity. Aspect of the beast is going to give you five percent increased. Um, it's going to give you five percent increased uh, attack power, which is really strong. It's as you know, it, it pairs very well with it, with uh, true shot or which I would like to have. Bar skin is great. It's my favorite. It's one of my favorite defensives. I really like it a lot. Battle shout going to give us bonus attack power, and it's going to be better than might. So don't take blessing of might because you're going to want to take blessing of kings. All right. So take battle shout, and you can have battle uh, blessing of kings and battle shout. Blink uh, is in charge. Here's my mobility. Basically, uh, this is a charge, and blink both will increase your damage. Anytime that there's a teleport phase in a boss, or let's say you're doing a world dragon and he tell charge, tell slashes you, not because you're in the wrong spot, right? Because the tank lost aggro or somebody pulled, but for whatever reason, you get tell swipe, you're flying through the air. If you're really quick and you hit charge, you'll be back on the boss and doing damage. You'll you'll hardly lose any DPS from the tail knock back. Otherwise, even blink the same thing, you can try to blink back to the location. And so these are actually gonna boost your damage. I took cleanse. I we're in a free roll type of like card rolling server and having a disease, there are a lot of diseases and curses um, that are going to really diminish your damage. And I can't tell you how many times I've been in a situation where people just won't dispel me or like I, I've been in spots where even in raids, 25 man raids, like I wind up somehow having to cleanse, you know, decurse the tank, uh, and other healers either have different priorities or they don't have the ability or nobody's speaking up for whatever reason. Like to me, cleanse is top tier. I could roll off of it if I got like say boom good form and I had no other choice. I could drop it, but I do like it for its utility. Uh conjure water's fine, but I would roll over it. Consecrate I like. Um it's situational. I don't put it down very often. But if I know the fights well, and I know that I'm going to get good value out of it, I can drop Consecrate and, and buff my damage. Divine Shield, I consider, I love this. It's a threat drop. But not only is it a threat drop, like it's also going to make me immune to damage for four seconds. I can use it to get some mind controls. Um, and I like, unlike, unlike Bop, you know, I like being able to still continue to move uh, and do stuff. Earthshock, I'll roll over. It's just, it's placeholder, let's say. Exorcism required for your build. Fade and Fane Death is my uh, threat drops. And until recently, it wasn't as big of a deal. But now that I've started to learn how the build works, I've gotten the Flame Tongue weapon. Um, I'm using the Seal of the Righteous. Like threat, threat reduction has started to become a big thing for me now. So I highly recommend at least at least have Fade. And, and Fane Death is like, if you can pull it, that's awesome. Okay. Uh, I think we talked about flame tongue weapon. It's given me currently about seven percent of my damage just from the proc. Um, that's that's top. That's aces for me, right? Hammer wrath. Your build doesn't work without it. Hand of reckoning. I I've taken it. We'll get into it when I get the RE section. So you already saw it in my macro. I'm using it. I'm. It's an eight second cooldown. It's off the GCB. So I just macroed into my ability, and it gives me just extra flat damage. It does, however, take more mana. So you have to be cognizant of that. And there's some alternatives to using it if you're having mana problems. So we'll, we'll get into that on when we get RE's healing touch. Like it's my preferred heal. I don't have to heal very often. When I do, I like healing touch. It heals for a lot. Uh, <clears throat> Holy Fire is basically here for testing. We might cover it in the RE section. There's some RE's that work with Holy Fire to buff my other damage. I have not been able to make it work. I, I guess I have been able to make it work, but it, it's clunky. Um, there's the using this cast sequence macro and and then being able to focus on situational awareness and stuff. I like Holy Fire is going to change that up. It's also going to interact uh, interestingly with some of your um, passive points that you've taken, and it can steal the uh, steal one of your procs and, and brick your rotation for a little bit. But it's definitely got some potential. I would roll over it right now if I had to. Holy Wrath, I like for the stun. It's an AoE stun. It's Holy Power. We, we, we're scaling Holy Damage, so it's strong. It's a strong AoE ability. 
Judgment Wisdom. It doesn't build doesn't work without it. Mark of the Wild is huge for me. It's my favorite buff. It's to me, it's it's better, but that's because I invest into it, and I'll I'll get into that when we cover REs. So pick lock place. I like pick clock, but it it can be rolled over. Uh, you always want to res, and it couples really well with uh, a feign death. So for recovery, you know you're not going to make it. You know people don't have to do corpse runs as if uh, corpse corpse runs. If you can find a safe location, you know, and feign death, then you jump up and res your party. That's great. Seals righteousness. Like tier one, the best. It's gonna carry, like I say, carry you all the way through that from from your starting zone to the portal behind me. Seal of righteousness, strength of earth. I don't like totems. I don't like having to put them down, but it's so strong. No pun intended. That um, you know that I had to take it. So strength of earth, very uh, I value very highly. Uh, teleport mingle because I'm superstitious and I think it's gonna buff my chances to uh, get boom conform. But I had no evidence to say that that's the case at all. Uh, like I say, everything else is pretty much straightforward. Um, yeah, Shamanistic Rage, super good uh, for your mana. Like it does more. I get more from it, from Shamanistic Rage, than I do from uh, Judgment of the Wise. And, and, and basically on all other mana sources. I have an alt that has Innervate, and I've tested it. Innervate's on a three-minute three cooldown. Uh, Shamanistic Rage on a one-minute cooldown. Uh, all three... Like with three shamanistic rages, really after the second, the shamanistic rage is regenerated more than innervate. The the only thing I, the innervate will per one use per one instance, um, it will generate more than shamanistic rage. I just get three times as many uses out of shamanistic rage, and then that's only going to get better as uh, my attack power scales up because it does scale off your attack power. Um, let's see if there's anything I didn't touch on, uh, but like. People debate Blessing of Sanctuary. I would put Blessing of Sanctuary in here if I could. I would take the one hit. I mean, it's 5% strength. And I've been in raids where other people do not share their Blessing of Sanctuary with me. Uh, maybe it was because we were neck and neck doing damage. But I look at the guy and he's got the buff. I don't have the buff. I ask for the buff. And I don't get it. So it's like, you know, maybe he was out of the, um, the region to give everybody the buff. The improved one or whatever. But like... Yeah, I didn't get it, and that's 5% strength, which is huge for this build. Um, boom Conform, I would take. I really would like to have it. Yeah. Some don'ts. I've seen people, I've had people ask me about things like, uh, you know, Death Wish. Don't take it. I've had people tell me that Berserker Stance was best in slot. It's not. It's, it's not. <laughs> if I can't get Boom Conform, if I get Molten Armor, there is a new RE that makes it give you 5% crit. I don't know if it's worth dropping it. We'll move into REs now. Um, and like I said, I want to, I want to cover, we'll start with like the legendary. So consecrated strikes, uh, I think it's purified by light. The, uh, the, there's another one that gives like a consecrated ground and a exorcism proc. It's not bad. I can't make it do as much damage as con strikes. So, um, so yeah, we'll just, for me, it's consecrated strikes. Um, then the next one that's easy, you're going to do it either way you build this, you're going to take Belfle Hammer and you're doing it because you're going to make the target take 5% increased holy damage and you can't beat that. You, you have some other one, other abilities like there's, um, what is it? Return to the light. I think when you do non-periodic shadow damage, you, you get 2% increased holy damage. You can stack up to five times. That's 10%. That would be better. Uh, it's not going to proc off weapon enchantments and stuff. So, like, I tried it with fire weapon on a, the fire one. I think it's church burning or something like that. But, or witch burning. I'm sorry, witch burning. So, it's like, uh, you're not going to proc it off fire weapon. Uh, you're not going to proc it off flame brand weapon attack. Um, so, yeah, Belfle Hammer, you, you're going to want it on uh, however you build this of uh, the two ways. I'm going to show you two ways or tell you two ways that I do it. So, it's going to be Bevel Hammer for sure. And then I take Bountiful Gifts and Fist of Reckoning. But what you could do, and what a lot of people do, and I don't have any problem with people doing this, I think it's it's smart. It, it's smart. It's strong, right? It's, it, there's nothing like, I'm not here to talk crap on people playing this way because I think it is good. And it's 
it has some advantages over the way that I'm playing. And so and you would take Pious Strikes and Holy Retribution. And what you need to know, and this is the reason I'm not using like say one, right? And 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 like I don't have to I have to pick two or two because if you take Pious Strikes, you're not gonna do any extra damage. And this makes your hammer righteous uh proc a holy nova, right? Around you. And um But it's gonna hit like a like a wet noodle, man. It, it's not gonna do any damage. I've tested it. It's really weak. It becomes strong if you add holy retribution, which allows your attack power to start scaling your holy nova. Um, it does make a cause threat, um, and it reduces the healing that it does. But this is strong. These two together are strong. Look, just one won't, won't cut it. Like if you just you, like, just take pious strikes, it's not gonna do anything. So take both of them. And then, okay, you can consider them being off the GCD as well. Like, you don't even have to macro them in. It's just going to cast it. So it's easier to make the macro for. It's less mana intensive. It's better for AoE. And, like, I don't think that Fist of the Reckoning meets, uh, like, even in single target, I don't think Fist of Reckoning actually gets as much damage as Holy Retribution. When cons when just compared. But you got to remember, at the same time, that's comparing one Epic RE against two. I've got to burn two slots, right, to get those advantages. So for me, I got uh, Fist of Reckoning. That's what I'm taking. It's eight seconds, and it's off the GCD, so it's macroed into my abilities for maximum throughput. And it's a solid amount of extra DPS, and I like that. And, the and, and, and you know, this could be changed to even something else. The, the reason that this was selected is because uh, I really needed one... I really wanted Bountiful Gifts. I value Bountiful Gifts very highly. Now, what it does is it makes your Mark of the Wild last for 30 seconds only. It's got a 15 second cooldown, but it quadruples um, the stats that you get. And so like if I scroll over it here, you'll see uh, what I wind up with. By and I took two points into the improved all right, because it makes it 40% stronger, which that's prior 40% stronger prior to being quadrupled. So what I wind up with is I get almost 700 armor and 44 all attributes, and then I get 61 to all resistances. And to me, that's strong. And I like to look at the damage meter after a fight and see like how I compare it to the other melee guys, as far as you know, people that are doing similar roles to me or in the same location as me, and I like to see like you know who took the least damage. And uh, this this is recently I've noticed like it keeps me at the bottom of the list, especially if it's combo with bark skin. Like I have bark skin occasionally if damage is going out. Like um, I can pop, and I love bark skin, but I also love market wall. And it's really good offensive. I mean, forty four strength is good. I have the mental dexterity to to benefit from the intellect, and then um, I guess like that's really like that's strong for me. Uh, I have the three piece from AQ40 now. So 8% of my strength is coming in as uh, spell crit. And then from the tree, I've got the passive that gives me 30%. So 38% of my strength is getting converted into crit. And then, uh, you know, natively, uh, every 25, um, every 25 intellect is giving me 1% spell crit. And so for getting 44 intellect is, it's big, man. It's big. It's, this is one of the reasons why I can, we can look at my character. You know, when I pop this, you're going to see, like, I'm sitting here uh, 500 and almost 550 strength, and then I pop it, and I'm going up to almost uh, 600, you know, because that 44 is getting scaled. Um, so I get more than actually 44 because I have some abilities that give me increased percent strength. And uh, like I said, it's taking my intellect up. Like right now, I'm getting 6.56. Uh, crit from my intellect. So the intellect is strong. Um, the extra, I mean, it's giving me extra stamina. The, the, ex, the 44 agility, you know, is that's becoming 44 attack power. And I consider this to be very strong. I like it. It's defensive and it's offensive. It keeps my, I, I'm sure the healers like it, whether they know it or not, that my resistances are, you know, uh, like uh, 83 here on the fire resistance. They're saying that's fair. Okay. 
I don't know exactly how to quantify this, but I'm just saying like, I, I noticed that I'm lower on the damage taken. So those are my epic REs. Uh, the next will be rare. I'll just kind of go around the world here. We already talked about uh, hasty judgment of, of wisdom. It's required to get our cooldowns right. And then mental quickness, these are required. You want three of them. All right, so uh, then I'm gonna take Seals of the Pure, and that's gonna be standard. Everybody's gonna take these. Everybody's going to take Sills of the Pure. I'm not doing anything out of the box here. The one thing I do different is to take Fanaticism. And this goes back to what I was saying earlier about Prado distribution and damage. Like, a lot of people will say, holy, holy, like, they'll take um, Spare No Rod. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's going to bump your damage up, right? That's fine. But people people assume Hammer of the Righteous is really, really strong. And it's, oh, it's pulling 10, 12% of my damage. It is, it is, but you're investing heavily into it, right? Uh, versus me, I'm just not going to because in and of itself, it's not doing enough damage. I like fanaticism because coupled with the other passives that we have with the fanaticism on the tree, the fanaticism on the tree is going to give you 30% critical strike chance on my judgment, right? And so now, uh, with these three points, that's an extra nine. So that's 39, basically. Um, I would say with raid buffs, I'm normally pulling, and, and I'll take flask of the executioner for crit. So, but in a raid, I'm normally pulling somewhere around like 92% crit on my uh, Judgment of the Righteous. And that's my AOE, but it's also my single target. Like it busts my single target. It's very, very high. The crits on uh, Seal of the Righteous are propagated by, or, or they were buffed again because they fall under Righteous Vengeance. They're one of the abilities from Righteous Vengeance. And that makes 45% of their damage to uh Take over eight seconds uh, on top. And so for me, I like the idea of investing where I'm getting good returns. And that's the reason I like this better than spare no rods. But you could go spare no rods. And I think conventionally, and most people are doing spare no rods. Uh, but from this is my personal preference. You know, uh, I can guarantee everybody's doing seals of pure. It's very, very strong. Um, I don't think it's outside the box or anything. Crusade, Crusade, I'm not committed on. I would easily drop Crusade if I needed hit or expertise. I would use this, but I would only use it until I could get enough hit or enough expertise. Um, if the trade off, you know, because the two percent, the precision is what it's called. It's two percent hit, and that's huge. It's spell and melee. Um, so, I, yeah, that's a good spot to get hit if you're not hit capped yet. You can see I don't rock a lot of hit gear. I'm not super invested in hit. Uh, so that could be nice. But right now it's Crusade. Crusade could go. 2% holy damage is just, it. the hit would be better if I needed it. And then I'm taking holy power. I really highly recommend holy power. 2% spell crit. Um, like I said, that's going to be propagated. You can get a lot of your abilities are going to get 40. Instead of just being doubled on crit, they're going to get... Uh, double plus 45% of that damage over, over eight seconds. So uh, I highly recommend the crit. Then that covers us on, on my REs. I would give a couple honorable mentions here real quick, just so you guys know. Um, where is it? I guess I've recorded this video so many times, I'm starting to get like a narrative in my mind. The only thing is I may forget something, but uh, you know, the direct command, I tried to use this to fix this one, I'll mention, but I tried to use it to fix my character. You know, I wasted so much. <laughs> uh, I it. I, you know, it's the holidays. I got a chance to play a lot. I don't have a chance to play as much anymore. Um, I wasted so much on the other character and I was desperate and I thought maybe this would fix it. It just, it just isn't going to scale. It's not going to fix command. It's going to take away the, the unique part of command and leave you with a, a weak uh, seal of the righteous. So, not going to do that. Cleansing of Flames. There's somebody who's going to come up with a build with this. It, like I said, I, I showed you I had Holy Flame. I, I play with it. I haven't been able to make it work. You you can <laughs> you can do a few things. And and there's some strong synergy in the tree. You would build different than this. Uh, but somebody that's clever is going to figure out a really strong build with this. It, I, I I would want I would want to like if I had more time to play I would want to play around with that more so I'll give that an honorable mention. Um, this is the one, one of the ones I was talking about like Return to the Light. If you do non periodic damage with like say Shadow, you got to be careful like what does and doesn't proc it. Um, 
I have not found a way to get this benefit, but if I could, and I wasn't taking a DPS loss, then it would be swap with Belfort Hammer. Uh, Word of Light's not bad if you have the, uh, Divine Storm. I haven't rolled it, and I don't really care if I get it or not. I, 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 it's, I like the, disp uh, the cleanse on it, you know, and it does help to proc and put down our, uh, our legendary buff, the uh, Consecrated Strength. Uh, but it doesn't fit in my rotation, and I, I feel fine without it. But Lunar Guidance will get a uh, Lunar Guidance over time. I get my crit levels higher. Then eventually, like once I get to a soft cap. Uh, so now, because I'm doing stuff like this, each spell has its own has a different crit value. And Seal of the Righteous is going to be one of the highest, or Judgment of the Righteous will be one of my highest critting abilities. Well, what that means is, as I move towards a soft cap. And your soft cap is when, let's say you have um, raid buffs that are going to give you like 10% crit. Maybe you got like a Boomkin coming in and there's another one, for, I think, from Shaman. But let's just say like you, you know that you're going to be maybe like your flask when you when you buff for raid plus, plus Boomkin uh, aura. Let's say you know you're going to get 10% crit. Well, then 90% is the point where you probably want to stop investing in crit. It's not that there's not going to be value in it. It's just going to be diminished value. Okay. Uh, as it stands, once you hit capped right now, crit is your best stat, your best secondary stat. Okay. So once I get to a soft cap on uh, Seal of the Righteous, then I'll start unspecking these. And, and Lunar Guides is something I've been looking into as, as a possibility. I'm not saying that's the one, but that's definitely something that I'm thinking about. <laughs> um, that here's the expertise and the precision. So these are options I would definitely take if I needed it. Um, other than that, I guess I I'll go over my gear really quick. So I got the three piece. You're gonna want the three piece uh, Avenger set from AQ40. I got Lucky in the Helm dropped. And I got the in normal, and I got the pants in heroic. And then I bought the Avengers, uh, the Greaves for accommodation points. Going from Judgment, I don't know about Wrath. Going from Judgment, I had no uh, crit on my boots, so this is the one I bought. And like I said, the other two pieces dropped. Had I had to, uh, had I had the boots drop, the next piece to buy would have probably been the chest. You get a massive increase on your critical strike chance when you get your chest. <laughs> so that's what I'm rocking. Three pieces of the Avengers set. Uh, I just have a regular Ember Fury Talisman. It's uh, it's par for the course. A lot of people have it out of Mythics. There's not a lot of um, there's not a lot of necks. The Amulet of the Shifting Sand would be better by a little bit. Unless I had a higher mythic uh, key, like as it, and this is one of the things that makes gearing hard is you're comparing like right now I'm comparing other alternative necks against this, but if I had ran uh, like say I'd gotten lucky and I did a mythic twenty, okay, and I got this neck, it would be a completely different evaluation. So it's hard to tell someone, hey, this one item, there is a trinket I think I can do that with, but. Um, it's hard to just tell people set in stone, like always take him for your talisman, right? Or always take X piece of gear or this raid piece is best. Well, it's best unless you have a certain, a certain item level out of mythic plus of this other dungeon item, you know? And then other than that, I just have judgment pieces. I got really lucky and got cloak with your kind of mind. Finally, right, right. Like the day before AQ 40 came out, I finally got it to drop and I won the roll. And, um, yeah, so other than that, judgment pieces uh, for my main hand, it's Hammer and Gathering Storm. I really like it. I wish it had crit. Um, then a chromatically tempered sword and offhand. You'll, um, this is a, this is a really really good offhand. I mean, it's giving me strength and agility. Um, I like it a lot. Uh, I got Rock Delar. I would never roll this over a hunter, but I got really lucky and there was no hunter in the group that we ran. Um, uh, there was somebody that had a hunter off spec and they were very adamant about that they, that they would like it, but I won the roll and it was really good for me. Now there is a gun that drops in AQ 40. I think it's got very similar stats. The reason that I like it is because of the crit. And so, uh, let's see, uh, ring of Trinity force. I had to buy this for comms. I just never could get it to drop. And then this is a quest reward for uh, doing the World Dragons, uh, the Nightmare Engulfed Object. It will give you a quest. Your best chance to get it is to wait till a server reset and go and kill, uh, like do a world boss tour. 
you just gotta type in, uh, you know, whisper to the guys. They should have the add-on the auto invite. You'll just invite, type into them or whisper them I N V, invite. You know, they'll auto invite you to the group, and you'll run around the world killing all the bosses. And one of them, one of those, some of those bosses will be nightmare dragons, and those nightmare dragons will drop the quest item. And it's strength crit, and I can't ask for a better ring, and I love it. So. Scroll blind light is really good. When it crits, you will do an insane amount of damage if you're in an AOE situation, you've got mobs around you. You know, all of a sudden, everything around you gets hit for you know, 8,000 damage. It, it's massive. You're gonna be glad you have Fade. <laughs> you might pop a cooldown. If you if, it's, if Fade's on cooldown, you might be popping Bark Skin. Like, you're gonna, you're gonna pull threat. You could pull threat with a crit. And then I'll, uh, this is maybe a little contentious, so I'll, I'll, but I'm going to put it out there. And I would say that uh, Heart of Worm of the Lack is better than Drake Fan Talisman, and people are going to challenge me on that. They, if you have it, you can go hit the dummy and test it. Testing's really hard. I spent a lot of time with the dummy, and testing's hard with this build. It's why, I, like I was saying, this is the slot machine of the DPS builds, because we're in a nasty spot with crit. You know, if you're sitting at like 70% crit, it's totally possible to go up. And I've had this where you go up and like, you know, I'm getting like, I got eight hammer and wraths, hammer and wraths in a row that are all crits. And so my damage is looking insane on the target dummy. Um, you can imagine if I was trying to test out a, a, a weapon, like a different weapon than one I'm currently using. And it, let's say it's an inferior weapon, uh, like, but for whatever reason, I rolled a bunch of crits in a row. Um, which is completely statistically possible on, on a short test, right? And so I'm going to think, man, wow, this thing is giving me so much more damage, but it's really not. And so test it if you can, but we'll break it down. We can just try to think about it like this. So with my current build and my current gear setup, I'm sitting at um, how much attack power. So here, if I pop some of my buffs, give me a king's going. All right, so... I'm sitting at like 660 strength uh, without Battle Shout going right now. We're sitting at what, 16, you know, almost 1700 attack power. I can tell you where my procs and stuff are up and it'll be close to 2400. So my Drake Fang Talisman is going to give me like 60 attack power. It's like a drop. It becomes a drop in the bucket. And I'm not going to get that much damage. However, crit, you know, 1.3 crit is going to be a lot of increased damage because every time I crit, I don't just deal double, at least on several of my abilities, my hardest hitting abilities, I don't just deal double damage. It also gets 45% of it uh, over time, over the next eight seconds. And so crits are very, very strong. With a 1% crit, irregardless of the haste, I think it's strong. Does it beat Drake Fang Talman? Maybe, maybe not, but the proc. So if you read the proc, it's gonna, it's gonna bathe your melee opponents in, in flame. For 120 to 180, but that's not what I get because it scales off spell power. Uh, I'm getting closer to 400 on a hit, uh, on just a white hit, not crit. I'm getting close to like 400 damage. Um, so it pulls somewhere between a half to 1% of my damage. The way that Drake Fang Talisman beats this is if, if you need hit. If you really need hit, like you'll have to take Drake Fang or you'll have to find some other alternative ways to get hit. That's the scenario where it could win. If you've got your hit sorted out, um, this trinket is better. And so that's sad because people go in and they just about want to fist fight over Drake Fang Talisman, and they could be getting a superior trinket uh, by queuing up over Black Rock Spire. I mean, even if I had this on rare, I would take it over over Drake Fang Talisman. Um, it's it's you know it's a crit. I think on regular, like just the rare is like nine crit, almost almost one percent crit. Uh, so that's that's something that maybe people don't think about. Like I said before, I think I feel like the judgment set was better. I built a spreadsheet. When it comes to comparing gear, what I'll do is I will take the stats on the item that I want to compare. So with Wrath and Judgment Set, I had to import all the stats into a spreadsheet and then sum them up. And then what you do is you liquidate your primary strat, uh, stat. So like any strength or intellect, instead of intellect, intellect got converted for me. And this is why I said it only like, like judgment was better for me with mental dexterity is I convert the intellect into attack power because I'm getting attack power from mental dexterity. 
and then I convert it into percent hit or uh, percent crit, right? Because every 25 points, like right now, I'm getting 6.33% crit from my intellect. So I sum that up. The strength is even harder to do because it becomes crit, it becomes hit, it becomes flat spell damage with our, our uh, uh, consecrated strength procs. And so strength is so strength gets uh, sorted out, and that's why I think people thought that wrath was better, is because it just has more strength. You wind up when you compare them, you wind up with judgment coming out with like a, with it, with mental dexterity. You wind up with the attack power being close to the same, but uh, judgment walking away with additional mana regeneration, a large, much larger mana pool, and a hundred additional spell power. Um, and I just like, like, now when you're building the spreadsheet, like when I'm building the spreadsheet, now I don't have to uh, like liquidate this into its base stats, but then I also have to take like when this becomes, you know, 1220. Um, I guess I wouldn't be doing it for my overall stuff, I'd be doing it for uh, a piece of like, so these gloves, right? So instead of looking at his 23 strength, I would be looking at it as, um, you know, 46 attack power. I would also need to multiply that by like 52 or 0.52. And to see how much spell power it's getting me to make sure I capture that. But all said and done, all sum to total, uh, Judgment was coming out about the same on all stats, except that it had larger mana pool, had passive MP5 regeneration, and then it had about 100 uh, spell power over the top. Um, and so, to me, that was the winner. I think it had, I think, about 1% more crit. Um, I'll check. Let me see. No, let's see. I don't want to say it wrong. It's wound up having, um, yeah, it wound up being about almost one percent more crit as well. That was from the inlet coming in. Um, so to me, judgment was better. But this is some of the kind of comparisons you're going to do. Uh, weapons, weapon damage. You need to. I, I was not looted the item in heroic the other day because it was a spell power crit sword it will pull out let's it up i'll tell you the name of it i'm still a little salty i'm not gonna lie um so it was off of Sidious, i believe it's Sidious, yeah so uh, here sharpened uh Sithlid femur i had it on heroic so it was over 100 spell power okay and it was over 15 crits so it's like one and a half a little better than one and a half percent crit and over 100 spell power, which is freaking huge for my build. Because that spell power, it scales uh, like everything except for two. Like, there's two abilities. Hammer the Righteous scales off spell power as well. Its base hit is based on my weapon damage. There's only two abilities in my whole toolkit that care what the freaking, what my um, white damage is on my weapon. And those two abilities are my auto attack. Okay? It's carrying about 5% of my damage. And then Hammer the Righteous, which I don't even invest in. I don't consider it, like, for me, Hammer Righteous is there to apply uh, Belfle Hammer, and it's there to proc Consecrated Strength, and that's it. And so, one of the things, guys, so I have an alt. Maybe I'll make a video. Or I have made a video. I don't know if I'm going to post it, but I have an alt that's level, uh, eye level 70, just, just unenchanted uh, Light Forge pieces, right? And so, she's got like a Gizzle Skinner, I believe, and a Barman Shanker for weapons. And no enchantments, no Crusader, nothing. I get her on the target dummy, and she does uh, about 2,400 damage, okay? If I put these level 17 weapons, that are like 14 damage per second on the weapons, if I equip those on her, she's going to pull about 2,100 damage. That's that's the hit that she takes. Now you got to remember a lot of that damage reduction is the fact that those those weapons have less strength on them. Um, but why is it so so small? Okay, it's because that white damage is still buffed by my attack power. At this point, I'm like on this grid right now. I'm getting a hundred a uh, hundred damage per second just from attack power. And so if the op opportunity is something like a rock, uh, whatever the rock, uh, the, the, the spellcaster weapon off Nefarian, it's going to be better because of that than the Edge of Chaos. And that's something I see a lot of people doing. Edge of Chaos is giving you like 30 attack power, right? 
uh, Rock Elar, whatever, whatever it's called, the uh, the one-handed uh, weapon with int and spell power. Um, it's going to give you like 84, I think, spell power. It's so much stronger. Attack power is stronger, but you got to normalize it. You got to multiply it by 1.52, okay? And that's that's how much spell power you need to beat it. Assuming that your abilities scale the same often as they do off of spell power and attack power. And so, but for that difference, um, the one handed mace off Nefarian is better than the one handed sword. And so, it's something that I see, it's a mistake I see a lot of people making. And like attack power, you got to be careful. Attack power is not as good as it may seem because we're, we're awash in it. The items with crit are going to be really strong and they're going to be very competitive. So, that's on our stat priority, you know, you want strength, hit the cap, then you want as much crit as you can possibly get until you get to a soft cap. Um, so intellect is really strong too, because it's going to give you the crit. So it's in there. Uh, haste, not as much. I played around and got my global uh, cooldowns to 1.2 seconds to swing it, squeeze in like Crusader Strike. Uh, it is a net damage loss. Even though I did wind up with more uptime on Consecrated uh, Strength, because I had a Crusader Strike in my swing, you spread yourself so thin, and then mana's hard to sustain. And if I didn't cover that before, that I will say that mana is harder for, to sustain for me nowadays because of Fist of Reckoning and Bountiful Gifts. They both burn a lot of mana. This one's off the GCD, so it's an extra cast. Um, I don't notice it really in a single target. Like if I'm on the dummy or something, I never run out of mana. Uh, in in mythics, um, like in dungeons, I will run out of mana if I'm if I'm just one shot and stuff uh, too fast. I don't get the hit. My proc will be up, but I'll just delete stuff in a couple of hits. I guess we'll go to Booty Bay and do a test, and I'll finish the video. I, I don't know how long this has become, but I could ramble for days. Um, I really, I really like this build, and like I find a lot of things that people are doing wrong. So, like I said, so no Berserker stance, um, Rock Biter or uh, Flame Tongue over Rock Biter. Um, do not use Heroic Strike or Cleave in your abilities. That's just terrible. Um, best enchants and enchantments. I guess I didn't go over enchantments today. We can go over enchantments really quick. Okay, so real quick. I want um, I want Falcon's Call, Helm, and Legs. Okay, that's... The, the, there's eight strength you can get as well, but that's what I like. Shoulder Enchant, I don't have it. This is basically... This, this PvP enchant is basically doing nothing. I don't think that Penetration even works with Holy because I don't think there's Holy Resistance on mobs. I could be wrong on that, but... I just have eight uh, agility on my cloak. There's not there's not any like the the mastercraft that are high risk ones that are really good for us. Eh, situationally, but they're expensive for the value. I, I just I save that money up and I'll put it in my uh, gambeson on my chest, which is going to be the crit one. It's what you want. Um, don't get uh, baited. Go for the seven strength. Don't go for the fifteen spell power. You want seven strength on your on your wrist, and you want seven strength on your gloves too. Um, then I have Crusader 1 and Crusader 2. They 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 will uh, both go off. They can stack on top of one another. They're considered different buffs. And so that's really strong. I am debating going with Spellbinder's Rage, which will be like 80 to 100 intellect and mana regen. If I get into a spot where I need mana regen, I think it's not a bad choice. It, it, at 100 intellect, that's 4% spell crit. It's not as good as the strength at all. But... If it mechanically makes my build work, or I find that I, I can't sustain mana otherwise, it may be one of the very best ways to get mana. I don't know how strong it is yet because I haven't wanted to buy it. It's expensive. I haven't wanted to buy it just to test it. Uh, eventually, I will, though. I will eventually test it and see, and we'll compare it to Shamanistic Rage. Uh, you want a crit, crit enchantment, crit scope for your bow. Um, you want a strength belt buckle. Uh, Falcon's Call, we said already there. I haven't enchanted these yet. I just got them. Um, it's going to be move speed for me. And that's what I do for my enchantments. And, uh, you know, it's not going to make or break you if you can't get one like the release. Like, if you have to go three stats on chest, it's not going to destroy your build. Your, your build's going to be fine. Um, we'll get in here and do a quick test. Let me uh, let me do a little auto attack. Get some rage. And, uh, you know, I can't can't not show you guys some, uh, some damage. Um, 
Why is this not showing? Okay, I think it's gonna work. All right, let me drop a totem. Oh, that's a scuff start. That's a scuff start. Uh, well, hopefully the damage meters are working. It would really suck if I didn't get the damage that I was kind of like expecting. Uh, it is a scuff start. It's going to make it a little bit longer attack. But so what I'm doing here is like I have Mark of the uh, Gift of the Wall, that little uh, weak ores. I'm tracking it. Guys, this build is pretty, uh, you have a one button macro. And I know that earlier I was getting feedback in the mic. You could probably hear my mouse wheel scrolling. It's a little bit wobbly. Uh, or maybe you can hear me pressing the keys. Um, so, you know, that's all I'm doing is, uh, is I have the macro on one and I have the, I have it also on my mouse wheel. And so like, I'll, I'll use those to try to not lose any globals to make sure I'm getting my, all my casts off and keep it a tight rotation. Um, on these dummies, uh, I'm normally pulling, I'll just tell you guys and you don't have to trust me. Like I said, this is the, uh, the casino of builds, you know? But normally I'm pulling about 4,500. That's what I'm normally pulling. Um, if we go to mana gained, I'll show you guys. Um, boy, I had so much, time, such a hard time last night. The servers were really bad, and they kept. So you can see how much mana I'm getting from Shaman Mystic Rage, and it, like I said, and that makes sense, right? It makes sense because if you look, um, it's scaling. It's 15 percent of my attack power. On hit and so at the moment i'm almost I'm, okay i'm over 2000 you can see right uh, i'm floating between 700 900 okay 850 strength these are where my procs are going off right uh consecrated strength i've got um, um holy strength and you'll see two sometimes i'll have both and i'll be one and two going off uh if i get lucky i'll have uh oh but my buff drop okay yeah if i get lucky i can get all the way up to a little over a thousand and so, forty five hundred is kind of what I advertise. That's what I want to tell you guys. And honestly, I think it might be like forty seven, uh, but but I'm feel comfortable saying forty five. Uh, but you can see how much mana I've gotten from Chime Mystic Rage, and it's nuts. I had Innervate, like I said, I'll try it on my alt, and I, every and not not nearly as geared, you know. But like here, Spellfire, you saw, I don't know if you saw, it was like close to three thousand. Uh, attack power. This is this is these are the kind of things that drowned out something like like a raw, attack, like cloak of the uh, cloak of fireball or whatever. The, the just pure attack power back. It, it it just can't boost your damage because you already have so much attack power, right? Uh, but I'm I'm happy with that. Forty five hundred. It's kind of what I was expecting. That's kind of what I advertise. I feel like it's safe to advertise forty five hundred. Now my gear is really good and it's properly enchanted. There is room for improvement, so there's a lot of things that I don't have on this character. Like True Shot Aura uh, in and of itself would be a massive, you can imagine, 5% more of this attack power is going to be huge. I'm letting my buff drop off. So, uh, But I like that. Um, our rotation is really simple. I like being able to just keep up Gift of the Wild. It gives me a little something to do and that and focus on being situationally aware. Um, so, okay, we'll, we'll call that. I, I want to go over one more thing. I'm going to go hit the... Um, I want to go hit the um, AOE dummies. Now, scroll blind and light won't be on cooldown. That's fine. But I just want, I think there's people that are concerned. I think people are concerned that Seal of Command does so much better damage that, um, you know, um, it does so much AOE damage that Seal of Righteous won't compare. And I'll be honest with you guys, like, I'm not, hey, I didn't have my flame tongue chance up. Okay, so your damage is going to be even higher, I guess. Um, like I, I can't believe I goofed up. Alright, so yeah, so I'm definitely comfortable advertising 4500s, man. Um, but yeah, I think people have a concern that they're not going to do very good AoE. And I, I'll be honest with you, like we'll look at my damage profile. We'll reset this, and we'll be able to see um, how the AoE looks, right? Uh, but but yeah, there, you don't need to be concerned that Silver Righteous is, isn't going to do good AOE, even though uh, my only AOE is really like the splash damage to everything around it. You'll see the numbers are, are nuts, right? It's like when I hit like right now, 
you see the 4,500, 40, or 3,500, 3,200. That's the splash damage to the adjacent enemies, right? And it's nuts. And yeah, I broke, I broke my meter. Okay. Well, let's see if we can fix it. It's, uh, it's broken. Okay, guys, I'll tell you though. I mean, uh, similar, similar to before, I pull normally around 9,000 damage AOE on the target damage. I feel comfortable advertising 8,000 8, for my gear set and everything. Like, if I was called out in game and saw March over to the target dummy right now, you're a liar. Like, I feel very confident that I will go over there. It, maybe one day when these uh, damage meters are better, I could re record. But uh, I, I'm confident telling you guys that uh 8,000 like I, I'm not going to be embarrassed if somebody challenges me to come hit the AOE pack in, you know in the capital city or here in Booty Bay and, and demand that I hit 8,000 there that's going to be easy um eight nine thousand no problem um for AOE uh, um so yeah so that's that's it. Looking forward. Uh, you know, there's a lot of new pieces. There's uh, some new trinkets and stuff I want to compare. Uh, is it Job Gabar or something like that in um, um, AQ40? There's the new trinket. It gives a lot of attack power. I don't like that. It doesn't suit my play style very much. I, I don't really like having... Like, it's so strong. I think I'm going to have to take it. But I don't like uh, stacking massive amounts of burst. And the reason is I'm already doing such good damage. I don't want to pull the threat, um, and so and tanks are in a little bit of a rough spot right, right now. Not a, not everyone, so right. So it's, it, but it's not fair to say like, oh, this one specific guy that got perfect rolls and has insane gear can hold threat. Like, uh, it is tough for the guys to hold threat right now, and so I want to keep my threat to a minimum. I would much prefer a um, whether it's an enchant or whatever. I would rather have. It makes testing easier too. And get away from that casino role, but right now with our crit, crit ability, the amount of crit we have, you know, you could easily go in and just like non stop crit. Uh, you could just as easily go in and get you know 25% of your, of your swings is, is crit. So, um, yeah, there's some new trinkets and stuff out. I'm gonna be trying them out. And if I see anything, like, there's always a champion, there's always a hero when you watch these videos and people give them bullshit advice and they're gonna break your build and you're gonna get. Uh, you know, you're going to get a month into playing your character and realize you can't anymore. Like, I'm speaking from experience, but there's always a hero down in the comments section telling people the truth, but they hate him. And people think that guy is caustic and abrasive and no good. But in reality, what he's doing is he's trying to save you time. And he's trying to, like, right the wrongs that are in the video. He spent the time. Maybe he even went and did some research so he could come back and tell you, like, hey, this guy is completely off. So... Uh, I, we need heroes like that in this video. If I've done or said anything that's incorrect or that would lead somebody astray, that's 100% not what I want. I will take the video down. If um, I will take the video down if I find that I have some gross errors, okay? I will try to update the comment section if I find out there are any errors. But at the end of the day, this is the way that I have kind of learned to play. I've tried to explain my thoughts. Um, I may do a test video of my other character just to show you guys the difference with Innervate and uh, Shaw Mystic Rage and to also show like how white damage on our abilities isn't isn't really uh, as big of a deal. I, I didn't show you guys, but yeah, so Heart of Crusader here, 21% uh, is normally going to be a little higher. The meters are a little buggy right now. Um, Highest highest crit that I've ever had for this gear set. The highest crit that I've ever gotten uh, currently is Hammer Wrath. I hit for twelve and a half thousand, and that was on Magma Dog in uh, an Ascendant Black Moon Light or uh, Molten Core. And so I had True Shot Aura, which I don't, which I would love to have, but uh, I had that as a raid uh, buff, and I had Flask and Food. Uh, so I, I think the build is strong and. Uh, uh, like I say, if you guys have any questions, hit, hit me up in the comments section. If you see something more important than that, if you see something that's wrong, it's going to lead people in the wrong direction, then uh, call that out. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. This is, uh, I tried to keep it short, but apparently this is going to be my master class. Uh, it's way too long, but 
I'm excited about the build and I ramble and I just, I, I'm just putting it out as a resource. I, thank you guys for watching. Uh, have a good day.